the game number one of the potentially the most important and most epic series even though if it's only one the first round between Dunedain and Torin is about to begin you have the red Mora player Dunedain versus the green Rohan player this is actually Torin he has a different username this matchup used to be quite difficult for Mordor let's see if it's still the case Tony is definitely one of the best players of the game but he's been quite rusty lately opening with a orc pit and a slaughterhouse and also golem and because we get the money faster in this patch maybe this opening might be the opening to go but without the second orc pit your early game will be of course weaker let's see and we have no dodges actually you need to play the matchup the only rule is we don't get to see the mirror matches between good factions and also no gondor against rohan so he's gonna actually creep it's super super aggressive opening for mordor a strategy i've never seen before in this tournament i mean uh, maybe it's gonna work out who knows he will definitely be able to creep this that's gonna get him a level 2 orc warrior almost level 3 and it looks like he will even be able to save him if this orc somehow gets level 3 if you oh my god if he brings them to the to the peasants too it would be kind of crazy and what is this opening from Dunedain actually you know what a crazy opening this orc is gonna hit like a truck now and also he's bringing the works to the peasants bro the damage from the orcs if they hit the hobbit it's the crazy damage but the hobbit will be barely able to survive he will get cloaked he will get one more wave of peasants but there are two orcs waiting for the peasants but this game already started with a crazy hype getting the money from the creep was of course super helpful and now he's trying to bring the works away and he's chasing the hobbit down hobbit cloak oh what a hit level three now he can even kill this works i believe with level three you can't get away from them i think he's trying to get them away from the from the this crazy bro this tune is using some techniques look at this money look at this money from dunedain this guy this game's this guy's technology is different bro he's got this guy's built different i mean this game is far from being over but that's one of the strongest openings i have seen from mordor since ages the fast creeping getting a level 2 orc and the way he's microing his units looks amazing he's trying to creep now this creep as well oh my god look at the positioning boys he will kind of lure them forever i believe nah oh oh my god no way no way look what he's doing with the works bro he's dancing with them oh my god can he do this one person was able to sneak through though ah uh, that's gonna be close it's no eye and the works are eating the orcs that's gonna be close but i don't think he can do that or no way he did it the money goes to rohan that's super unlucky though but now the works are gonna chase down the rohirrim they need to deal with this actually and also this peasant was able to destroy the lumber mill but look at the money mordor is building the troll cage right after the first rohirrim from rohan arrived on the field this is crazy bro this is crazy with only one orc pit no haradrim palace what a performance from mordor but he will lose both the lumber mills outside now but it's totally fine he's a tower defending this area uh, rohan is trying to get some vision around this area maybe he will see the early troll cage that is gonna be a troll it sounds like a joke but it's not there is gonna be a troll in like what four minutes into the game it's crazy but because of that move i mean because of the strategy you have no second orc pit you have no haradrim palace you will not be able to contest the creeping from rohan rohan should be easily able to take all the remaining creeps from the map force of Eisen. is for for example this one but you already was able to get two creeps though so that means it's going to be two creeps for mordor and potentially four creeps for rohan 
but remember the troll might be able to stop that from happening. However, Rohan has a chance to counter the troll by getting Eowyn and Elma upon the field. He went for the heal. Oh my god, he will get the creep too. Oh my god, he's healing. Ooh, what a hit! And he gets the creep, he kills the horrors and gets the money too. Bro, this guy is built different or what? There is no way. What an incredible performance. I mean, now this troll can also creep this one. That's, that was the, the creep number three for Mordor. And that's going to be creep number four. Creeping as Mordor against Rohan. Four out of six creeps on the map Forts of Aizen. This is impressive. This is one word. It's impressive. Level two orc uh, troll, I mean. You will get the money too. Money is looking good. The creep here is still remaining. That was the only creep Rohan was able to take so far. He's checking this area, but he will not find any any success. Now, he needs to go for the technology of Eowyn and Elma. He already went for Elma. So, spear throw will be used, but he can knock you down on the ground. Be careful. Now, the troll might be dead, though, because Eowyn will not let him live. And that's going to be free experience. Troll is low. In a dream world, you should always give it to Elma. That Elma should be the one who gets the last hit on the troll. But I think it's gonna be Eowyn. And he's gonna put them together. This way they can share experience. They get all immediate level two for killing a level two troll. And with this being said, now you need to be careful. Yes, Eowyn Smite has a minute cooldown, so you can't spam it. But uh, you need to respect it because each troll you will lose will cost you lots of money. And also feed lots of power points to your opponent. Oh my god. Eoma's spear. Troll is gonna get in safety and can always eat the orc to regenerate his HP back to full. I mean, of course, Mordor has no map control, which is um, expected, to be honest with you. The creep is still remaining, but that's good for Rohan, that this creep is still there. Now, he can use the heroes, Eoma and Eowyn, to creep this troll there. And get Eoma to almost level 4. That's going to be the thing you are looking for. Eoma already almost level 3, you know. So he will easily get level 4. After creeping this troll. And potentially killing these two works. I mean, after creeping this work. And killing these two homeless works. From the creep Mordor was able to take before. Level 3 Eoma. Level 4 Eoma is the key to victory in this matchup. You will need the damage leadership from Eoma. It's super important. He went for the archery range, he doesn't go for the armory, he knows. What he needs first is the row damage. And for that reason, you need to fire row damage on your Rohirrim Archer. And with the double leadership stack from Eoma and also Theorin, you will be in a phenomenal spot. And you will be just fine. So Mordor has industry. He has troll cage almost level 2. Oh, but he stopped making trolls. He went for two trolls and then rushed Nazgul, bro. Oh my god. And there is nothing, as we are talking, that this Rohan can do against the Nazgul. The performance of Dunedain. He can stop this creep, by the way. I mean, Eowyn and Eoma's spear, but they won't one-shot the Nazgul, of course. He will go for the creep. He doesn't want him to get the creep experience here for no reason. You, wanna, you don't want to let them the creep though, uh, but it looks like he will take the creep. Eowyn got the experience out of the creep though, but Eoma was able to share experience. He's almost level 4. The Nazgul has to be careful. Eowyn's spear will be able to finish him off. You need to get back to full HP very, very soon. And with the Nazgul, it will be also easier for Mordor to keep the farms he has under his control. Because now, Rohan can't just think, uh, you know send horses solo. If, the, if he does, Nazgul will be there to punish you. He will kill all your normal Rohirrim and will get more and more power points. Of course, at this point of the time, Rohan is a time machine, a time bomb. It's, at some point, he will be so rich and so strong that the Nazgul can't approach him anymore. But as we are talking, he has no resistances to fear on his Rohirrim Archer army. It means the screech of the Nazgul can mess up this Rohan army. What an incredible performance. In the game number one from both the players. Amazing performance, actually. You have three trolls. One of them has even rocks in his hands. 
Gondine has potentially the craziest place with all of his tactic, kind of unexpected stuff. That's his specialty. So if somebody can pull this off, it has to be Donadine. Troll Kitch level 2. Drum is upon the field for the leadership, using the land. And you see, but that's what I was talking about, by the way, about when you do this, when you chase with the Nazgul and also the trolls, if he ever stops shooting uh, to shoot your Nazgul, your trolls will close the distance, close the gap, and will smash them on the ground. Industry has been used. Land was used in the front of the motor base. That's a smart move from Rohan to not cover this land out of no reason. I will be used. And now the Nazgul is on the hunt. Ooh, the punishment. Now he's gonna stop dealing with the Nazgul. Nazgul has to fly. Ooh, what a fine hit, bro. And, oh, so close. Irwin almost got killed. And the way this player is playing, he's at the limit, okay? He's limit testing his army. I mean, this is DFE me at its peak, bro. The Nazgul survived that. I think the Nazgul adding, uh, of course, a lot of momentum to the to the Mordor. Yeah, I agree with you that Nazgul is going to be not the best choice for the for the entire game duration. But I think it was definitely the, the right choice in the current situation he was finding himself in. Of course, you can be patient and go to save the money for the Witch King. But I think he wanted to have the Nazgul up on the field as far as, as, fast as possible. Industry, he is, I think he's saving for the Witch King now. He has run about 4k, he stopped making trolls. All he makes are orcs, they cost no money. And now he can sit on the money and uh, on, the, on the current army he has. But also Rohan is gonna get stronger. He went for the heavy armor, that's gonna be a whole different situation now. Uh, with, the, with the heavy armor, the, the damage from the Nazgul is gonna be super limited. You have not this crazy splash anymore that can one-shot the whole army. You can knock them down on the ground, but it won't one-shot. Beside the target you aim for. But Mordor can definitely camp this out. Is Irma level 4 now? I'm um, almost, but still not yet. So, you know, denying him experience would be super important. There is a level 3 Rohir Marcha who is immune to fear. This one. That's a normal Rohir, by the way. The Rohir Marches are not going to be immune to fear. Unless Theoden is going to hit level 3, which he still needs experience for. It's a very important slaughterhouse, which is going to be destroyed, unfortunately, for Mordor. But there is nothing he can do about this. The Nazgul can't really approach now, because on the Alvin Wood, your trolls have no leadership bonuses. So for, for that reason, the choice of Thorin placing the Alvin Wood right on this spot was actually the best possible choice. I really like this choice. That messes up the Mordor so much. Went for the Nazgul, cancelled the Nazgul, going for the Nazgul, cancelling the Nazgul, trying, of course, his best to go for the Witch King, but he might not be able to do that. Rohan is everywhere. Still a difficult matchup for Mordor. The bigger the map is, the better for Mordor. On small maps like Forts of Isen, not the best. Here's a Nazgul, just arrived. Yeah, but the Rohir March army was not that strong. The Nazgul feels strong when... Oh, he went for the Nazgul, actually, for the second Nazgul. Smart move, killing the trolls first. That's what you want to do. Ooh, but the Nazguls, bro! The Nazguls, bro! Hold on a second. Going for the Nazgul, number one. Nah, well, all the trolls gone. There's no leadership on the land, you know. But all the Rohir Marches are also gone. Don't lose the, don't lose this horse. Eoma doesn't get level 4 yet, you know. That's the problem. If Eoma would be level 4 there, it would be a whole different situation. What a fine hit from the drummer troll. All the Rohir Marches are gone. All of them. Only a normal Rohir is remaining on the field. Going for the Devastation and save both the Nazgul's too. Okay, one Rohir Marcha was able to survive actually. And also Eowyn got killed. That means this Nazgul has to be afraid of nothing. The city is shooting, of course. There comes a Screech, but... 
Also, the, the Steeble is shooting. He's going for the Rohirrim Arches. Fishing power points with the Nazgul, though. I like it. And now, he needs to use the moment to get the map control back with his Nazguls. I mean... The land messed up Mordor big time there. If it would not be there for the land, um, Mordor would smash everything, not even close. But, of course, on the enemy land, your trolls have no power. Yeah, before, true, in, in the base game, trolls were not affected by the, by the land. They would not gain leadership from the land, they would not lose leadership from the land. Let's see if the Eowyn back. Oh, this troll is, this Nazgul is gone. Oh, this Nazgul is gone. Oh my god, so close actually, for the second time. So close for the second time. He's trying to go for the Witch King too, by the way. But this Nazgul is out of the fight for the next minute. He needs a lot of time to regenerate back to full HP. He's trying to look for him. But he can always fly over the river back and forth. Hard to catch him. Eowyn is going to be there very soon. But Eowyn was level 4 actually. It's going to be a 2 minutes and 30 seconds revive time. So without Eowyn you have not. You are lacking the burst damage. And also still he just got Eoma level 4. That's a whole different situation now. And Eoma level 4. That's going to be a whole different situation bro. Screech. Screech. Otherwise you are dead. Yeah. But he could Screech. You know. He had like, he had like 2 level 2 Rohirrim Archer. The Screech would mess him up. Big time. He's going for the Witch King. But he might lose the Tita before he comes out. He goes for the big heal. There comes the Nazgul. The Witch King won't be there in time, bro. What a beautiful hit. Oh my god, he won't be that in time. He needs still 10 seconds. Offensive GG strategy. He will be there in time, bro. He will be there in time. Oh my god. The witch but the, the, the timing, the witch king and the Eowyn came on the field at the same time. The damage is now illegal. Like, I'm telling you, Eoma and Theodin combination is so much raw damage. I mean, I don't care about the outcome of this game, but this game was crazy, bro. Very well played by both the players. The way Dune, is, Dune played this, but also the way Thorin adapted to the playstyle of Dunedain very fast. He knew exactly what to do at every stage of the game to still control the entire game. A very well played, high class gameplay from both the players, Thorin and also Dunedain. And I'm excited to see the matchup in reverse in the upcoming game. You will see the same matchup, but Dune will be playing the Rohan faction. And Thorin is going to play the Mordor faction. On the same map. What a performance. Devastation. Witch King is super badly damaged. Very long revive time for the Nazgûs. Four minutes, actually. Oh my god, level 4, level 3, now the resistance is to fear, the Screech won't do anything, Aragorn is also up on the field. The main problem was the map control, you know, Rohan had the money to do all of that, he went for the Call the Heart. I like this game, bro, very well played. You see the recruit time of the trolls? Crazy. <laughs> when you have Call the Heart, phew! He come out so fast, but you have no money, of course, to do all of that stuff. You know, you can't keep producing trolls over and over again. You have not to sustain in your eco. On the land, you have no leadership, bro. I think that's what you, why you need to be careful as Mordor now in the mid game. You can't just spam land uh, randomly, which can be countered easily. But that was still one of the best Rohan against Mordor performances I have seen so far. And I'm excited to see that for the second time in the game number two. Wow. Speechless.
But it's lagging now. Okay, never mind. Okay, the money difference also kind of huge. 10,000 differential. Even though he had industry and devastation, map control still overrules everything. We're going to be jumping immediately into the game number two, right before I update the scoreboard. Give me a second. And also, everybody who was betting on Torin in the game number one will get points. And we're going to open the bets for the game number two. Okay? Wish you best of luck, guys. Okay, let's go. Game number two. The same matchup. But this time, it's going to be the host of Torin. So that means Rohan has to play back-to-back -back of host. But to, uh, the way Tony played this, I don't think that's going to be the same play style of Torin. Torin likes to go with the double troll, uh, double orc pit, go for the for the Haradrim Palace. And Dune went for the for the strategy of going for the fast troll cage. Which kind of results you in long terms to lose the entire map, you know. You can't control outposts, you can't control farms, you can't fight against Rohirrim warriors. You can't do any of that. So I'm like expecting a different opening and different strategy from Torin in the game number two. Maybe we can pull this off and win as Mordor against Rohan. That would be dope. To see that's not about the faction, but maybe it's about the strategy, you know? Alrighty. So we have the Mordor player, Torin, going for a double orc pit technology, like mentioned before. And his opponent going for the Double farm opening and the peasants will move one of them through the middle and one of them going to the top, bottom side to actually capture these two settlements at the left side of the map, Forts of Eisen. And of course, we will get to see plenty of orcs, which will make the defense overall easier for you because the first wave will be easily defended in a 2v1 situation. And also the second wave, you can count counter this. You will have plenty of orcs to creep the whole map before the horses come out. I mean, you will be poor though in free for alls. You need actually money. One peasant was taken down. Even if the peasant makes it to the to the to the settlement here, it wouldn't change a thing. Oh my God, he will lose another peasant. Quickly now. It seems like the orcs are faster than peasants, but it can't be. They have the same speed. Orcs everywhere, by the way. Also scouting everywhere. Um, will he spam more peasants, though? That's the big question. So Mordor is lurking, watching every possible entrance to his own side of the map. The Hobbit was able to make it through. The Hobbit is going to kill some workers. Making sure that this uh, lumber mill is not producing any resources for the player. What's up, Don? Welcome to the stream. And Hobbit was able to get cloaked. I mean, he could use the Eye of Sauron to reveal him, but uh, let's be honest, I don't think it's needed. Bring your pretty face to my is he gonna go for the Beast Rush or what with the Orcs? I mean, Git Rush is not forbidden, by the way, but it's uh, not cool. <laughs> I would not like to see that in a tournament. I don't think that uh, Thorin would do this. There comes Eye of Sauron and commitment to the, to the Vork Lair. And the Hobbit is gonna be, of course, annoying as much as he potentially can. But remember, there is only, never mind, he went for another worker army there, but they are not working. Only one worker is working, so this money production from this lumber mill isn't the greatest. It's going to be two orc pits into the slaughterhouse, into the Haradrim palace. So it's more like a unit based opening, less than um, eco based opening for Mordor. The Rohirrim warriors just arrived on the field right after the Mordor player was taking the first creep. And he is also rotating now to the second creep at the top side. He has two orcs chasing down the hobbit and two more orcs coming to sport. And with the four orcs, he should be easily able to do that. Uh, Dune was even able to creep only with two orcs, while only one of them was focusing down the lair. The farm is going to be protected. That's pretty good. And 
the Rohirrim number two and also the Rohirrim number three will be recruited so he's not he's gonna get a lot of Rohirrim the plan is to keep the eco from Mordor checked while you are able to keep yourself that's why you need three fast horses against Mordor also as Gondor as well as Rohan Mordor is rotating out to the creep number three at the bottom side oh it's a nice attempt the money will also go to Mordor so the Hobbit couldn't do anything about the situation so the double orc pit technology as you can see in the example b we have seen the example e in the first game um is working wonders for mordor giving you the, the the crazy early game presence and the ability to creep a lot and kind of get a huge advantage you know and you will get more and more orcs they will hit level two very very soon the orc pits it means the production speed is going to be even increased more i'm assuming Thorin is planning to go for a troll cage afraid of a potential beast rush with the rohirrim warriors um who were able to destroy this mill over there for the first time in the game and also uh, trampling down the haradrims on top of the enemy land will not kill them in a second beautiful micro actually very well then but i believe Mordor was also able to creep this one so now the cre the remaining creeps are the creeps in the middle at the top and at the bottom and rohan wasn't creeping anything for now which is okay you don't need to focus on creeping with your first two horses you need to focus more on hurting the enemy economy it's more important haradrim palace will hit level two now after this haradrim comes out and we will get to see some rune soldiers very soon now duni likes to go for a hero action so whenever he will see the rune soldiers he might go for legolas for example he might go for gimli but when you see trolls i don't think gimli is gonna add too much to the table you need maybe uh, elvin elma combination like we have seen in the previous game this actually uh, does a very great job against the trolls who are being sent forward offensively so this Mordor is definitely having more map control than the Mordor we have seen in the previous game. Simply because of the Orc spam. Rather than Paris level 2, Mordor Eco. Um, he has 1700, so it looks like he's kind of thinking about not going for the Troll Cage and going for the for the fast Nazgul instead. Um, even though some might disagree, but I think the Nazgul did a good job in the, the first game, especially the first Nazgul kind of stalling the game and defending and gaining lots of power points for you oh nice one actually level three that's why they, they don't die theodian has been recruited and not going for eoma theodian will get level three if he gets the solo experience from this creep and glorious charge always being good you know but i think elma leadership is being just more important almost level three actually but there are too many orcs you need to kill over and over again so you will get there eventually um troll cage the first troll is upon this field very soon queuing up no outpost control from mordor the creep here is still remaining under control for nobody um i'm assuming rohan is planning to get the creep for his uh, king for uh Theodin king to get him to Glo glorious charge to level four going for the armory does he have power points for the elves and nope he doesn't but he might get that you know and then when you have gc plus a couple of rohirrim with upgrades and you summon the elves to kill the two three trolls he will have on the field and the push might work wonders it looks like the runes are rotating to the creep They are super tanky actually. And they also hurt the works a lot. But I think they might not be able to do that. Because their damage against structures is not the greatest. Troll is up on the field. Donidine has to be careful. And again, um, you don't need to invent any new strategies to see what is the right play. Um what his opponent did in the previous game was obviously the right play going for the for the siblings 
It looks like Rohan was able to take the creep, so getting closer to the Elvins, I mean. But Mordor has a lot of map control, actually, you know? Which is super nice to see. The farm is gonna go down to the two trolls. We have uh, two trolls, the third one is on the field very soon. And also a bunch of runes, orcs, and overall a bit, a much more active Mordor gameplay. That's like the summary of the strategy from Thorin. He doesn't need to sit in the base and wait for the opponent to come. He doesn't need to camp it out. He can play the game actively, participate in the game. Dear Padawans tipped one euro. What a generous pirate. There are only two worse things than watching Fords of Ison. Namely death and taxes. <laughs> Thank you very much for the for the one dollar donation. Really means a lot. This horse uh, this troll is gonna go down actually. There is no way you can save him. If Theorian gets the last hit. So smart. So smart the way he's you see he stopped shooting at him. This guy is so smart actually, you know? And he's yes he Jesus now. Did you see what he just did? He stopped shooting at him and made sure that Theodin is the one who gets the hit before the troll falls on the ground. Before the troll falls on the ground to get the full experience. And now he has glorious charge. Unbelievable. Very well done. Oh my god, these runes on the land are so crazy. Thank you, bro. Holy guacamole. What the heck? Porcupine formation plus the land. I mean, this is the main differential between the soldiers of Rune compared to the Isengard pikemen. They are so tanky. That's not even funny anymore. Look, they are tanking this like bosses. Outpost captured by Mordor. Um, okay, so Dunedain didn't go for Eoma. And I think that's gonna be one of his major problems in the Super Elite game. Mordor has still the upper hand in terms of a um, map and he went for the for the grand uh, for the glorious charge to kill this um, Easterling he was able to do that but using glorious charge for this of course I don't know about that one actually all Mordor needs to do is do what he's doing you know participate actively on the map with the with the runes and orcs and stall the game until you get the witch king upon the field and you have trolls with drummer troll and you have a witch king that will be kind of tough to break through when you have no leadership from Eoma. Like, because we nerfed the leadership from Theodin to 40% from 50 and compensated that with Eoma's leadership from 60 to 70. So you get the same uh, power, so you get the same power like you used to have, but you need the Eoma leadership now a bit more than you used to have, you know? It's a leadership you need to work for. Like, Theoden is a gifted leadership. You get him on the field, you, bam, you have leadership, you know? But Elma, you need to get him to level 4. It's an uh, act of, of uh, patience and also work. You need to work for it. So Rohan is getting some map back. And not too many runes being spammed. Mordor has now not too much money, though. He is getting more and more trolls up on the field. I'm not sure what Mordor is planning to do. The question is, where are his trolls at, though? I don't see them in the base. Never mind, I see them now. They have rocks in their hands. So they want to snipe down Theodin. Like, this rocks connect on him. He's one-shotted. Almost darkness, too. Now it's debatable if he should go for the devastation or not. You know? Look at those orc horns. Keep squeezing out of that pit. <laughs> Yohan arches up, up on the wall. Fire all purchase now. And we will get to see, of course, more and more Rohir Marcha. Remember, the Glorious Charge also gives you more damage, right? It gives you 20% more damage. It's also able to stack with the leadership of your king. So you will get from this hero all alone 60% more damage. That's always great. And when you want to get into the leadership, you can always go for Aragorn too. Aragorn might be your, uh, the way to go. But I think Elma leadership, I mean, Elma has the highest DPS leadership in the entire game. Like, the 70% more damage is kind of crazy. Nobody gives that much of uh, damage, you know. Lourdes and Bora gives only 60, for example. Yeah. 
But there are too many trolls. Like when there are too many trolls, what you want to do is you want to you wanna, uh, play for the Cloud Break, you know? Cloud Break is the big counter to the troll spam. Not connected. Rune soldiers. Hmm, I don't know about the about the lead game uh, situation. What might happen between these two players? It's hard to tell. Outpost will be finally taken down. 4.2k for Mordor. Darkness available. He has plenty of trolls. And Rohan has no Eom leadership. These are the circumstances for the game number two. So definitely looking worse for Rohan than it did in the previous game when Torim was playing Rohan because he had Eom leadership, which this player doesn't. And he had also full map control, which this Rohan player doesn't. Mordor has a level 2 Lambir Mill, which means this one has not been touched for a very long time. And he is pressuring with the double orc pit over and over again. They are all about hit level 3, which would be a faster production speed. And also the runes are causing trouble. So this is the summary of the early mid game. Mordor has 6.3k. We will see the Witch King very, very soon. Rohan has not that much money. Because he's being prepared for a potential push. So he went for a statue here. For the Grand Harvest on some of the farms. And also he didn't demolish the archer range. So he needs to get somehow the money for at least Aragorn. That would be a very important situation. Um, now there is no rule for Mordor to camp. What he can always do is wait for the Witch King and go for the Rohan base. It's a gamble. It might work, it might not work, but it, if it does work, it's a win for you, you know? So most people are making the mistake, they are waiting to be attacked. But I think if you have like five, six trolls like this, right? He has, I mean, he has only four trolls. You maybe you need like two more trolls. You have two drama trolls, you have Witch King, and then you go. And in your base, you can always leave some rune soldiers for the defense if you feel unsafe, you know? Okay, so King's Weaver is available. You can use that over and over again. Be beautiful. That's gonna give them level 3. From When they are level 2, they will get level 3 immediately. That means the resistances to fear will be unlocked. Now Rohan is controlling the whole map. And he will slowly siege. But you see the sieging timing, you know. Finally making it to the Mordor base uh, was much later in this game. Darkness... Oof, now you need to bail. Can't overcome it. And now there comes the Witch King. Oh my goodness. I think the army should be just fine. Witch King can't overchase. He can always turn and shoot at you, Witch King. Oh my god, never mind. The trolls are still hunting. Will he go for the, for the Rohan base though? Will he be that, you know, kind of kind of risky? Like, it might not work out. Will you do this? Because there might be a Irwin waiting for you very, very soon with the spear throw. Oof, he's overcommitting. Now you can't chase into this anymore. And Mordor, at least for now, won't be going for the, for the main castle. But again, you know, you basically defend yourself. Your orcs will do the job for you to get the whole map back. No Aragorn yet. And no Aragorn anytime soon. He has not the money for this. He has four structures in the base which are not giving him any money, you know. That's the main problem. So he has to have map control. Look at them glowing, bro. They are so tanky. Darkness plus drum plus Witch King. Witch King is like a crazy radius of leadership. He's building up. Ooh, don't, 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 don't. He's building the thingy here. Oh my god, they are going in, boys. Oof, they are going in, boys. He has to build the post and get. You need to demolish this, actually. You need to demolish this as soon as possible. You don't want your units to be stuck here. Destroy the farm. Beautiful, smart move here from Dunedain. 
Now here they have also leadership from the Stichu. And there is a backup with Theoman Arches on top of the wall with the wall banner leadership in the Stichu and Theodine. Now it's a different situation when you have this much leadership, you will hit and hurt a lot. The trolls are charged and there comes the glorious charge moment. Big focus on the Witch King, Witch King, Witch King, Witch King, Witch King, Witch King is dead. And that's a big leadership gone. The trolls are going in, closing the distance and they are trying to smash. The runes are so annoying in front of your face. And they have to make it to the well. But remember, they lost a very important leadership. The Witch King leadership is key. And also darkness is about to wear off. That means only drum leadership will be remaining. And the Yeoman arches on top of the wall are crushing the trolls on the, on the ground. But they have still time. Time, time to finish. There comes the Elven summon. And it looks like Mordor doesn't want to commit too much. But all the army from Rohan, legit, almost all of that has been completely demolished. The positioning of the runes here was so nice. As the Rohan player was trying to make it to the well, he had to run through the rune soldiers in the porcupine formation. And this hurts, bro. This hurts. Like, taking out the Witch King out of the fight in the, at the beginning was definitely very rewarding, yeah? But you don't want to be facing trolls in a small area where you can't split up your army, where you don't have space to act, you know, to, 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 to use uh, for your own advantage. Yeah, because he put them on the whole ground stance for whatever reason, bro. <laughs> yeah, we need to remove the stances. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he wanted to change the formation, but he put them on the old ground stands, and that's the main reason why they're not shooting. <laughs> you know, that's so unfortunate, bro. Good eye necker, though. I didn't even notice. Ooh, nice punishment. Without the leadership of darkness and or... Oh, that's... Oh, my goodness. I like... He never, he never lost the army to begin with. Rogash show you strength of trolls! Crazy, bro. Yeah, in the next version, in the 4.9, we will actually remove the stances from the game because it kind of causes problems. And we will uh, wait for the feedback. Oh, that's an important distraction on the, on the Baradur. Level 6. Mordor's good map control though has no outpost. That means losing this will deny the revival of the Witch King. The ends are going to war. It is likely that we go to our doom. The last march of the ends begins. Mordor will fall apart, boys. And it's back to back Rohan beating Mordor. The first game a bit easier, the second game a bit harder. But I like it, because the score will be dead even. And also, oh, don't lose. Also for the game number two. Uh, game, game number three, we will see a different map. Hopefully also a different matchup. The Rohan's lead game is super strong, actually, no? Like, the Rohirrim Archer DPS is super high, bro. Look the range from the ends with the rock throw. The damage also pretty good. And it's a level 3 production building with 6500 HP, you know? But these are obviously siege weapons. They don't care about your HP. They just hit hard. Very, very hard. He's bringing more reinforcements to this location. The he have heal? He doesn't have heal. 12 power points versus 4. So Morda was actually kind of close-ish um, to the... To the Valdrog. Maybe the commitment to the base wasn't the greatest because I had the feeling that Rohan was expecting such a thing when it already stage you built up and Yeoman Arch on top of the wall. So he was kind of expecting to be rushed from Mordor. When you expect and when you are prepared for such a big thing, you know, it's always rewarding. Going for the outpost at the top side. The gate not even repaired. Uh, they were not shooting because of the whole ground stands. If they would shoot, actually, it would be a different situation, I believe. Like, I was wondering why these trolls, these two trolls here, they were not getting killed. I was like, why? Right 
offensive GG strategy actually from Mordor. And from Rohan actually. Yeah, true. I mean, I was also wondering because he went to this location, they have like splash damage. But maybe he clicked on the wall and not on the archer. When you don't click on the archer, I think you don't hit them. But this game was looking good for Mordor actually, no? Was looking very good for Mordor. But I'm happy that Tune is also back in the business, bro. It's always nice to watch Tune playing, Torin playing, Alan playing, you know? Always fun. Garvin. The Witch King, of course, hurts. Like him losing the Witch King there. Maybe if he wouldn't lose the Witch King, it would be a different situation. I like the way he's playing with the runes, though. He's sneaking the middle in a little bit, you know? It's so nice. So you can never move. When you find yourself in a situation like this, you can't really move. You need to press S and fight. And he knows he can win this. And Mordor will lose back to back to Rohan. Dorodain takes the win with Rohan. As well as Ro Thorin did take the win with the Rohan on the map for Sovizen. And the score is going to be dead even. As we're going to jump into the first tiebreaker on the host of Thorin. While he will choose the map for the game number three.